Arctic Trucks has developed a vehicle that is tailored for the Icelandic rescue operators. The vehicle is built on one of the most popular vehicles in the world, the Ford F-150. The key to meet the extreme conditions in Iceland is the Arctic Trucks 44-inch conversion with the AT Nokian Hakabelita tire. This vehicle can float on most type of snow, cross glaciers, make soft sand very easy, drives comfortably on rough roads, plus fast and quiet on the highway. The compound in the tires is soft and the tire is designed to give us a very good flotation on snow with low tire pressure. In Antarctica, we are using these tires with temperature below minus 40 on the high plateau and their performance remains excellent. The tire tread is not aggressive, which gives us better traction on icy roads and is more forgiving in dry snow, but at times spikes are still needed and especially on wet ice. This vehicle is built for Garðar, a rescue team in Húsavík in north of Iceland. The car is not finished yet, but this is the pilot vehicle in a series of vehicles we are going to produce. The design and build has taken us more time than expected, but we have placed extra effort in giving this vehicle the capability needed and keeping down the weight of the extra parts added to the car. This vehicle has 40mm lift, which is added to the 160mm lift, which comes from the tires. Still, I would say that the vehicle is quite easy to work with and get in and out of. We place strong emphasis on low center of gravity to maximize the traction which all four tires can give in slopey landscape packed with snow. Up to a point, long and wide wheelbase helps with this too, but there are compromises to be made. These vehicles with nearly four meter long wheelbase may, in example, struggle with steep river banks. In emergency, this vehicle can carry an injured or sick person. When weather prohibits rescue helicopter flying, this vehicle will need to carry the person to the nearest open road, which an ambulance can reach. The bed is two meter long, and with a soft back and a heater inside the bed, it can carry a laying person. The vehicle may often need to do a long operation with no access to fuel, so an extra fuel tank is added. Fuel to this tank is added separately, but then internally pumped over to the main tank. This is a diesel vehicle, so it has add low as well. This vehicle has wide side steps, which among other helps protect the body and fenders on gravel and rocky roads. However, the side steps can gather snow, which in some conditions can get wet and freeze. This can hold you back from opening the door or damage the door as you try to open. The doors on the F-150, they go all the way down, which limits how high we can place the side steps. Too high and the likelihood of damaging the door increases, and too low, the likelihood of damaging the side steps increases. So compromises are needed. As we need to rebuild the body to fit the tires, we also need, for example, to cut into the headlights and uh, sacrificing the high beam and move it into a separate auxiliary light. Winter operation in Iceland can be very dark and visibility issues are often very challenging. So the vehicle is fitted with many extra lights. For a rescue vehicle, this also includes close priority lights for driving in traffic. In remote Iceland, the vehicles also need strong communication equipment, etc. Tetra system which covers all of Iceland and VHF, which is commonly used in a group operation. As I mentioned earlier, the long wheelbase can challenge the undercarriage, so extra protection is needed. This vehicle is fitted with a set from RCI, made of steel, but we are considering some lighter options, in example aluminium or other. The rear bumper is still not finished, but it is designed with the needs of rescue teams in mind. But also, it is not to increase the weight from the original bumper. This may include needs to push or break ice in the river, high lifts are often needed, power outlet to use the winds in the back, and more. Uh, the front bumper is also still in process, but as for the rear bumper, it is designed for the rescue operation. We have a place for the high lift, a fixture for the manual air outlet for inflating tires. We have a fixture for um, a power outlet, uh, for example, for the winds. And um, on top, we have a place for up to eight auxiliary lights. 
In the rescue team in Husavik opted for steel wheels with beadlock, but optionally we offer alloy wheels without beadlock, which reduces the weight by about 16 kilos per wheel. Still to be fitted are fixtures for the wheel onto the wheel for the central tire inflation system. If we look into the engine bay, this vehicle has a diesel engine, but we are already in process with another rescue vehicle fitted with 3.5 EcoBoost. The vehicle comes with original 100% rear diff lock, but we have added 100% front diff lock from ARB. This pump is also used for inflate optional rear air suspension. Fuses for the auxiliary electrical system are placed in an easy, and ac easy access location. The front and rear auxiliary electrical power outlet is switched on separately with this switched. Behind the grille, we have two AP67 rated powerful VR compressors for the central tire inflation system. As we need to remove the original windshield wiper tank, uh, we have replaced it with a new one. Still to, re to be resolved is a solution to get a snorkel on this vehicle, both in terms of water and also for snow dust to, that can suffocate the engine breathing. We're currently working on this. If we look uh, inside the car, when this is shot, it's not completely finished, but almost there. For navigation, we've installed a Garmin 276CX, and for easier navigation, this is connected to a, a, a tab with a bigger screen. Then we have a phone, which is uh, a special app to control the tire inflation system and the rear spring air suspension if this is selected. Here we can see the Tetra radio and the VHF radio behind it. Then we have the Swiss Sport, uh, 12 channel Swiss Sport for the Ox electrical system. The team in Husavik requested for a full manual control on the rear air springs as a backup on the automatic system. Then we have the control knob for the search lights on the top, uh, control for the Webasto oil heater on the bed, but this vehicle does not have the optional engine oil heater. To keep the auxiliary electrical system protected, all the main controls are fitted inside the vehicle in an accessible spot. Under the console box is also a battery charger that makes it easy to plug it in and protect the car battery when the vehicle is in storage. The materials that we have selected are to withstand a very low temperature and be of a high quality grade. Behind the rear seat, the central tire inflation system is fitted together with a moisturizing collector to avoid ice buildup in the system. This vehicle is fitted with optional rear air spring suspension. To keep the weight down, we designed the suspension using high strength steel and emphasize strong performance both on and off-road. To get the functionality we wanted, we needed to fit the air springs uh, into the vehicle frame and therefore redesigning the frame around the air spring. Uh, I will stop my English translation to this video here, but I'll leave some video behind uh, when uh, one of our engineers is discussing the rear air spring suspension. Thank you. Ég <laughs> Ég með loftbúðinu þá er þetta stilla hæðin á bílnum náttúrulega eftir því sem að hlæðst. Þetta er allt saman úr 3.5 mm 700 megapalkara efnum sem er þá tæplega 2 sem svona sterkara heldur en stál 52 sem að við notum yfirleitt. Og hvað hva græðum við á því? Þá getur við haft sinnræfni og fengið meiri styrk. Í rauninni er þetta mikið sterkara heldur venjulega en samt léttara. Sko, til þess að hafa bílinn í þeirri hæð sem við vildum hafa þá þurftu við að setja og já og fá þá fjöðrunar slaglind sem við vildum þá var grindin svolítið fyrir en við þurftum að, að tökum úrinni aðeins og setjum, setjum styrkingu á hana tilbaka og þetta hérna í rauninni skerst í burtu og kemur styrking í staðinn þannig að búðin 
er í rauninni aðeins inn í grindinu og, og þá náum við fullri lengd á, á fúðan á með þess að reykast í dekki þetta hérna getur maður stýrt í hvernig, hvernig bílinn trakkar með bötur því að velja lengdin á stífunni og staðsetninguna á, á þessum púlti þetta til og en fjaðri er náttúrulega að snúa alltaf svolítið upp á sig stöglega þegar er mikið mikið grif og mikið torg og en með loftbúðunum þá er þetta stilla hæðin á bílunum náttúrulega eftir því sem að það hleðst þannig að þá er hægt að hafa hafa eldsvitistankana tankin sem er hér borginal í bílum óbreyttan og væri hægt að setja annan í staðinn fyrir sem þessi bústið er og þessi þeirra þannig að við væri með forlink þá þyrftum við að hafa stífur á, á sömustöðum og tankanirum og þyrfti að minka þá og það sem að gerist líka er að í staðinn ef maður hefði svo kallað svona samhliða forlink þar sem að ein stífa væri hérna fyrir ofan og önnur neðan beitt fyrir ofan hvor aðra og þá rekst það upp í grindina áður en það verið komið með full, fulla fjöðurum þannig að það er hægt að láta bílinn fjaðra betur með þessu 